Well, good evening. Amen. Welcome to Kelsey Creek Church on this Good Friday. Uh, good Friday, uh, as you may know, uh, is nearing the end of the season of Lent. This 40-day journey, 40 days plus Sundays technically, where we are invited to slow down and journey with Jesus as he takes steps towards the cross. Of course, Good Friday is where he meets the cross, and we'll talk about that as we go on through this evening. Lent technically goes on through tomorrow as we sit in silence, and of course it ends as we get ready to arise on Easter Sunday uh, and worship Jesus in the good news of the resurrection. The thing about Good Friday is it's actually a difficult service to know what to do with. I mean, perhaps you felt this. First of all, it is a bit like countercultural. I mean, because while we know that the world is full of hard and bad things, we talk about sin, we talk about the reality of death. I don't know about you, but when I gather with my friends for worship, I don't want to ignore those things, but I also don't want to dwell on them. And so worship tends to have a big celebratory element, rightly so. There is much to celebrate. Good Friday says, actually, we're going to celebrate, but it is going to be very subdued. In fact, we're going to spend some time thinking a lot about death, specifically the death of Jesus, which of course rescues us from death. At the same time, Good Friday is difficult because I don't know, perhaps you've experienced this, but I'm tempted to jump ahead to Easter. Right? I don't, I don't want to sit in the sorrow of Good Friday. And, and the real idea is, is we live in a world of resurrection, so it's, it's, it's kind of hard to stay here. All that said, I'm going to invite you as best you can to sit with the soberness of this day, to, to try to not run ahead quite yet on these final steps in this season of Lent. Sit with the reality of Jesus' death. Pay attention to sin in the world and to your own sin. Not in despair, but with a real sense of awareness that might awaken uh, some deep gratitude a couple of days from now on Easter Sunday. Now, we're going to do a number of things in this service to give you space to do that. It will include some singing and some reflection. We will gather at the communion table where we have this very tangible and vivid picture of it. We're also going to give you space to sit and reflect, to partake of some silence. In fact, we might move a little sl more slowly when we get to the communion table. That is deliberate. It's to give us each the space to pay attention to God's gift in Christ Jesus, even in all its sobering reality as we come, as we come together on Good Friday. But we're going to begin, as we do when we gather each Sunday morning, we're going to gather with a time of silence. And so I'm going to give you some space now to prepare your heart, to begin to open your heart to the things that God might say in this most sober and yet important day of worship and Good Friday. So take advantage of this time of silence. We'll rise together and worship in just a moment. As we continue to contemplate this day and all that it means, and as we look forward to what's ahead, let's stand together and recite a call to worship as a body. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. The Lord says, as a mother comforts his child, so I comfort you. should gain an interest 
us in the Savior's blood. Died he for me, who caused his pain for me, who him to death pursue. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, art to die for me? Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? He let this Father's known above, so free, so infinite His grace, emptied Himself of all but love. Hear this call to prayer. Dear friends, we are gathered here in sorrow and in hope at the death of our teacher, son, brother, and friend, Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, Son of God. Let us now turn our hearts to God in prayer that he may strengthen our faith and grant us his comfort. Let us pray. O God of all comfort, tonight we remember our dear brother Jesus. Thank you for giving him to us to know and to love. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn and show us your grace. We feel the fleeting passage of life and we know how fragile is our existence. We confess with the prophet, all flesh is grass, and all its glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall. Yet we also confess, the word of the Lord stands forever. We look to you as children look to their mother, for you alone can comfort us. Have mercy on us, O God. See our tears, hear our cries, 
and let us all, as pilgrims through this valley of death's shadow, in the light of your kingdom. Amen. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that he should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. A 
understand. Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far 
from her cries of anguish. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet, you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted you, and you delivered them. To you, they cried out and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusted God, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth, I was cast on you. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted inside me. My mouth is dried up like a pot shard, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me down in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircle me. They pierce my hands, my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garments. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouths of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him. All you descendants of Israel, for he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord. And he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it.
From Luke 23, verses 44 through 49. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered 
to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. We have the great privilege of gathering at the communion table tonight. And as I told you earlier, we're going to take our time with this um, because there's a lot going on at the table. And of course, when Jesus shared this table with his disciples before he was crucified, they were commemorating an old story, the Passover story, the story that the people of God in the Old Testament nation of Israel commemorated year after year. To remember when God rescued them from slavery, when his judgment passed over them, and they were invited to, to gather at the table, to take bread and to take wine, and to remember. Of course, they were also to be in pointing forward to what we gather around tonight. When Jesus gathered with his disciples at this table before he was crucified, at a Passover supper, he put a slightly different spin on things. I mean, it was the same story and that God was rescuing his people from slavery, but it was also a different story in in that there wasn't a lamb that was offered up to pass over, to, to allow God's judgment to pass over God's people. It was the Son of God who would be the final sacrifice, the Lamb of God, the one who would put an end to the need to ritual, the one who would fulfill all the promises that people proclaimed for thousands of years and still proclaim. And of course, as we just sang, we'll proclaim forever. Now, because so much changed and so much happened at the table, I think the church has struggled to find the words to explain what is happening here. In fact, depending on what tradition you grew up in, Um, If you grew up in the church, you you may have used different terms to refer to this this meal. You may have heard it referred to as communion, which is an appropriate term. We take this together as a people, because this is not an individual exchange, but God redeeming his people. You may have heard it referred to as the Lord's Supper, because it was the Lord, Jesus, who invited us to this table. That is an appropriate term term. In some circles, they refer to this as the Eucharist, using a Greek word which means thanksgiving. And the the picture is, we receive this with great gratitude, because Jesus has given his life for us. Again, an appropriate term. And of course, our Catholic brothers and sisters often refer to this as the Mass, which is actually related to the word mission, to be sent. It's a reminder that this is not where the story stops. This is where the story is sent forth. We take and eat, and we go and tell. Again, a very appropriate picture. I think all these terms are are, are appropriate. I don't think any single one of them captures what happens in this moment. But I invite you to come with all those pictures in mind. Recognizing that you are gathered with people who are in need just like you and who Jesus loves just like you and who God calls into fellowship with you and with me. To come recognizing that this is not my table, it's not your table, it's not this church's or any organization or denomination or body, this is the Lord's table. And he says, who is welcome here? And of course we come with to celebrate the Eucharist with great thanksgiving. It is a sobering service. It is Good Friday, and yet there is much to give thanks to God for. The price of our redemption was incredibly costly. But thanks be to God. God paid it because he loves you and me. And of course, there is the mass element. As you come to the table, the invitation is to go and tell, to go and invite, to invite folks to come and see, to catch a taste of what you and I are invited to enjoy tonight. 
And of course, the thing that we're invited to recognize is that while we gather at this table, there are brothers and sisters around the world who gather at tables like this, in churches like this, across denominational lines, across language barriers, on different continents. And guess what? People have been doing this for a couple thousand years. God's people have gathered to proclaim the goodness of God in this meal, and that is what we're invited to partake of tonight. The other thing I said is, you know, it's hard to not jump ahead in a Good Friday service. It actually is pretty hard when you serve communion to do the same thing. Because when you find this practice happening in the New Testament, the, the Apostle Paul says these words. He says that whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You kind of jump ahead to the fact that he's returning. We do remember that tonight, but I'm actually going to leave those words out tonight. We gather at the Lord's table to proclaim his death and to sit with it for a couple of days until we rejoice in his resurrection, which reminds us he is coming again. So here's how this will work. I'll invite servers and forward in just uh, uh, a few minutes. In a moment, we're going to invite you to be seated. We will actually come and serve you, and we'll do so by passing first the bread uh, down each row. So if you take, you'll take the bread, you'll take a piece for yourself if you will pass it to your neighbor. If you will hold the bread, we'll take the bread together in a moment. If you need prepackaged or gluten-free elements, you'll find a, a, a bowl in the middle, and please take those. Uh, you can open it to take the bread out with us in just a moment. After we've had time to receive the bread together, servers will come forward, we'll take the cup, and we'll bring it to you. You're invited to take a cup and to hold on to it, to pass the tray to your neighbors. And again, we will take together. If we're going to take our time, and we're going to give you all the space you need to reflect on this. You're doing something that has been done for thousands of years, with thousands upon thousands of people. Something that is hard to put into words because there is so much happening at this table. Something significant. The gift of God for the people of God. I invite you to take a moment to reflect on these things. I'll invite our servers forward in just a moment. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he said, this is my body, which is for you. I invite our service forward.
said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I invite you to take and eat. After supper, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant, which is in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. And brought our service forward. Sing. 
Jesus said, this is my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you in remembrance of me. Scripture says that after they shared that meal with Jesus, that they sang a hymn and they went out. Of course, they went out not knowing what was next. The good news is we do know what was next. But I invite you to imagine what it was like having Jesus turn this meal into something slightly different, even though the story felt the same, and then going out to face what was ahead of him. Let's stand and sing together.
end the way we began tonight, by recognizing that Good Friday is a hard service to know what to do with. I mean, you can even hear hints that we, we're, we're singing of resurrection in the midst of recognizing the cross of Christ. That means you don't have to leave uh, downtrodden, worried, or in fear. You can leave in hope. But I am going to invite you to not rush ahead to Easter morning if you can. I'm going to invite you to try to, to sit with the sobering reality of Good Friday this evening and tomorrow on what is often referred to as Holy Saturday, remembering that Jesus' disciples in his day didn't know what was coming. In fact, <laughs> their hopes were all but lost. I'm going to invite you to just, as, as you have time tomorrow, in stillness and quiet, to imagine what that was like to do so, preparing yourself to worship in joyous celebration on Easter Sunday. We're also going to end in silence tonight, like we began with silence, which is countercultural. One of the biggest things we love to do is mingle in the lobby. In fact, that's one of the great things about Kelsey Creek Church. I love spending time with you, and you're invited to do so, but I want to invite you to just be respectful tonight and, and to, to leave in silence. Not without hope, but in silence, kind of recognizing the soberness of the moment. Finally, I told you we're not going to rush anything. And so in a minute, you'll be dismissed after we have this proclamation, this acclamation. But if you want to spend some time in, hanging around for a little bit, if you need some more time here, you are welcome to linger and pray, to sit in silence. And in fact, if you'd like someone to pray with you, I'll be available up front. I'd consider it a great privilege if that would be something that you would welcome. But the invitation is to take your time, to go in silence, and to get ready for what is coming a couple of days from now. I hope that you will join us then. But as we prepare to go, I invite you to join me in this acclamation and this benediction. People of God, may we join with the thousands of angels encircling God's throne in declaring... May Jesus Christ, the Lamb, who is obedient to death, even death on the cross, guide, encourage, and protect you. Amen. Go in peace.